Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd, ahabita fillah. Some general advice about learning about the religion. And for those who want to do talib al-ilm. First and foremost, we should know that talib al-ilm, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, talib al-said, talib al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslima, kulli muslim wa muslima. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam said, seeking the knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim man and Muslim woman. And the scholars, they mention that every Muslim man and woman should know something about their religion. That they should know the basics of their religion, meaning what they need in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. That doesn't mean they need to know every... Uh, detail about issues, big issues like jihad, or the issues, the shuru to takfir, or uh, the masail related to ahl bid'ah. No, but every Muslim needs to know that which is going to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those acts of ibadah which every Muslim must do. For example, purification. Salat, Zakat if you have the wealth, Hajj if you have the means to do so, uh, and on and on for and, and how to fast the, the month of Ramadan, how to pay Zakat al-Fitr. These kind of things, these are the things that we need to know. For the women, they need to know about proper hijab. Uh, they need to know about their menses. So they, this relates to Tahara and things like this. So these are some of the things in which we need to know. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, May yurid Allah hu bihi khayran infekhu fiddeen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. So it lets us know that that is a favor from Allah, the knowledge, ilm, and wisdom, and hikmah. That this is a favor from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are prerequisites for da'wah in Allah. That in order to call to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person needs some knowledge. They need knowledge of what they are calling to. They need knowledge of the people they're calling to. And they need to have fit in, in how to apply their knowledge. Another important piece of advice is that you have to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in a long hadith, I believe it's a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala or it might be uh, Abdullah ibn, uh, uh, ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala where he said that the Prophet sallallahu said, إِنَّ al nas yuqda alayhi yawm al-qiyama rajlun ustushida fa'utiya bihi fa'arafu niyamuhu fa'arafaha in the Akhira Hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned three people. And he said, from amongst the first people who will be held accountable on the Day of Judgment is the person who died, came to Allah as a martyr. And what he did will be brought before Allah and he'll, and he'll, uh, and it'll be known. And he'll be asked, what did you do for my sake? And he'll say, I, I fought for your sake, and I was martyred. And then Allah will say, you lied, but rather you fought so that the people would say you're brave. And then the next individual brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the Prophet sallallahu is the one who studied knowledge and learned the Qur'an. And they studied knowledge and learned the Qur'an so that the people would say that they were an alim, or say that they were a qari, so the second person is the person who learned the Quran and they had knowledge. They learned the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they will be brought before Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and Allah will say, Why did you do this? Or what did you do? And they'll say that, you know, we read the Quran, we learned the Quran and we taught it, and we learned Elm and we taught it. And Allah will say you lied, but rather you did it so that the people would praise you, think, say you were an alim, or say that you were a great reciter. And it, and it was said, meaning that you got your reward in this life.
and then Allah will have them thrown in the fire. So this shows us the importance of ikhlas in your talab al -ilm. If you want to seek knowledge, that you need sincerity. Another important issue that I'm going to mention, and this will be the last thing to keep it brief, is, or two things. One thing is to have sincerity and fiqh, or trust, in those people that you listen to. So if you have a sheikh, or if you have different mashayikh, or different students of knowledge that you benefit from, then you should trust them in their views. That doesn't mean you blind follow them, because they're still responsible for bringing evidence for what they say. But rather, you should have some trust in what they say, in order to, uh, because you, you need them. You need them until you are able to attain knowledge and you gain benefit from them. So you should have trust in someone. You have to trust someone with learning your religion. And this is the way we learn enemies. We learn it from the ulama, we learn it from the students of knowledge who pass it on to us. And the last thing I want to mention is for those people who want to study abroad, who want to go and travel the earth and gain Islamic knowledge, this is one of the greatest things that you can do. And some of the ulama mentioned that it's a, a type of jihad. And to have this niya, this intention to lift the ignorance from yourself and to lift it from others is great in his alim. And as we mentioned, sincerity is very important because as the Salaf used to say, talab al ilm talab al jannah that the seeker of knowledge is the seeker of paradise. Why? Because it's sincerity. Because uh, seeking knowledge, seeking Islamic knowledge is seeking paradise if you're sincere if it's not just to have a lot of books or to show the people or this or whatever but rather you are trying to come closer to your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala you're trying to lift the ignorance from yourself you're trying to lift the ignorance from others you love to teach them then this is something great Aveen. and so many of our brothers and sisters would love to go study the religion outside of their countries especially in the west and this is not always possible for them, especially now with all the turmoil and all the fitna that's going on in many of the Muslim lands. To come here to Saudi Arabia is very difficult, unfortunately, especially if you're over the age of 25 to come seek knowledge in the university because they've made a lot of conditions, which makes it difficult upon the average Muslim that wants to come study here. But you have the opportunity if you're here and you, you, uh, you're working, then you have the opportunity to work and do Talib al -Ilm if you're blessed to be able to do that. But for many of our brothers and sisters, they're unable to do that. So then where should they go? Well, there are opportunities. You can study the Arabic language in, in, in Egypt. And Egypt is one of the places I would recommend because it seems to be one of the places that's uh, semi-stable. They're having problems in fitna, but at least you can still probably go to Cairo and different places and study Quran and study Arabic and study uh, fit in, in all the sciences, the Islamic science. Egypt has a lot of a wealth of knowledge if you find uh, the means. So, but if you're unable to do so because of financially and you don't want to study in the places of Ahl Bidah that might give you a scholarship, then as the ulama mentioned, the knowledge is so easy now to obtain, meaning that the internet is full of knowledge. Now there's so many lectures, there's no excuse if you're sincere, that you can go, you can pick up a book in English and find it translated and listen to a student knowledge pass on to you what they learned from the ulama. There are so many Salafi durus from the Salafi websites, there's no excuse that a person who's sincere, that they can raise their knowledge. It's not like going sitting with the ulama, no, but it's the next best thing when you, uh, in your situation. And so this is some sincere, sincere advice I have, and this is what I learned from the ulama, and I've sat with ulama, and we've asked these type of questions, and these are some of the answers, or uh, uh, I've compiled the answers and put it, and articulated it, hopefully it was clear, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam,